Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to spend a little bit of time talking about the pros and the cons of online education. And uh, we're waiting for a couple of folks to jump on here. Um, I think Tech is on-ish. I think he jumped on and then ran off to have dinner or something. I'm not sure. I wasn't here in the office myself when he jumped on initially, and uh, I think everyone else's minds just went totally numb from being in quarantine for so long. So uh, we'll give it a few minutes to see if anybody else jumps on. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the pros and the cons of education. It was either that or the um, Internet Archive basically allowing full, uh, basically unlimited download access to copyrighted works caused a lot of concern among the author community, um, which I actually did a separate uh, video about that on my other channel yesterday. So... Uh, that is the other potential thing, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and cram that into the news for now. Uh, I am also monitoring on the Discord server, so if you want to uh, follow along over there, I'm on the the uh, live chat section. we got Quantum Alphas over there, and looks like we just got Quantum Alpha over there. Oh, no, and John. John showed up over there, too. I couldn't they're both their names have the same deep purple color. I should like be playing some deep purple over here. Smoke on the water, you know. Anyway, but anyway, how's it going there, man? All right. Look. Delay. Am I the only? Am I the only guest on? So far, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure where everyone me. else went Just because we I'm telling you, was. everyone's quarantined. I don't know where they went. I mean, it's not like they're going anywhere. <laughs> quarantined from the live stream. That's right. That's right. But uh, yeah, like I haven't heard from Quint. I usually hear from him if he's not going to jump on, so he might jump on later. And okay. um, yeah, Vince hasn't been able to catch on for a while, but uh, maybe he'll my, jump on or not. I don't know. I don't dog know. Uh, might be joining us a part of oh, the way in, a special oh, guest if my nice. roommates send him up. So I, got, we'll, uh... I moved the cat bed on top of the, the tables by the windows, and the cat actually seems to like it over there. So. He's kind of chilling out of the scene. You can almost see him in the background of the. Oh, camera. Uh, I can see. Yeah, I can see a little movement. Yeah, well, he's he's so. still tails back there, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's down there. All right. Um, so you getting work done in chat. quarantine? Uh, yeah, I had to uh, temporarily de-quarantine myself uh, and uh -oh. go to my physical location of work, but. Uh, yeah, I had it's to like, I had to carry a questionnaire that filled that I filled out and signed saying that I'm showing no symptoms and um so, if uh if the security if security came and they I didn't have it on me they could do, do bad things to me so nice so like send you to the gulag so did it was it was it like the first time in a long time you ever felt joyous about going to work or not. Oh no! I really wanted to stay home. <laughs> like okay, I'm a hundred. I I'm <laughs> joyous being at home and working because I, I I I I have this office set up almost exactly how I would like it. It's a little messy over here mm -hmm. on the right. I should probably turn my monitor so y'all can yeah, see that. But... <laughs> mine's, mine's. I mean, I even have aluminum foil. I mean, I have aluminum foil. I'm in good shape. All right. That's great. Um, you know, I'm working on I'm working on backups because, of course, it took me three days to access the backups, and so I bought a secondary safe, and I'm going to bust out a quarantine and go hide it at a friend's house, so I have <sighs> offsite backup somewhere else. How yeah, dare you? You know, well, yeah, you know, because because you're anyway. still human. You're still human. Well. Well, how about how about I still have a functioning brain? There, how's that? <laughs> um, don't, so don't you be p passing around that human malware now? I'm telling you, I might, I might. You're think part of the problem. Yeah, you know, we love you, but you're part there. of the problem. Apparently, I am. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of narrowing it. It took me like four days, but I think I finally figured out the structure I'm going to use for the banner for the new, um, the new redesign on the Christian website. Like yep. I was looking for something specific, but it's like I, I had to compromise out. I'm just, I'm, I left something out. Just, I'm just like, all right, I'm just going to deal with it because, mm. yeah. but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, dark goes on right now. Good greetings. Might as well make a quarantine, uh, a, a, a quartini, quartini to drink for this one. There you go. Have a quartini. <laughs> what else making quartinis? 
<laughs> that's like that's like the most only that's like we're getting on zoom and getting drunk together <laughs> All I've got is a crappy ice drink. <laughs> oh, Lord. Jacob Stewart is on. It. Greetings, Jacob Stewart. How's it going there? Um, Spiva is with us. Let's see. Spiva. How's it going there? Just showed up. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, I don't know where everyone else went. It's just like, I think what happens, though, when everyone's forced to work at home and stuff is you can lose, like, you lose all schedule. You lose all track of everything. Yeah. And so that's probably what's going on. Um, of course, I haven't because really the only thing that I'm doing differently is I, I'm going to the store less. I mean, I've only been to the post office once so far this week, and that was today. So That's which, one time too many. I hate yeah, well, it. It might be. And, you know, I didn't bring my camera with me to take a picture of those guys in their plastic wrap cubes. Um, is that a joke or are they like oh, no legitimately... no they oh have legitimately God. they have legitimately duct taped plastic isolation chambers for every postal worker and cut out oh a little place gosh. for you to hand money That's over funny, it man. is the most hilarious thing it, it looked funny. just like that scene in et right near the end where they're coming up and everything's in plastic and everyone's isolating each other in plastic the post office in our town looks just like that it's just glorious <laughs> Then of course I am getting census mail now, right? So you gotta fill out your census, everybody. And yeah, um, I already did that. Fun. I'm good. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not getting fined this year. Well, I I'm gonna I'm gonna do it online, of course, because you know, they don't ask for a lot, I don't think. But you know, the government missed an opportunity here. I mean, if you look at your letter and they're saying recently you should receive instructions for completing it, which yeah, okay, yeah, I got stuff online. Uh, I actually I just got this yesterday. I just got that today. Uh, so I got the reminder letter before the actual letter. And it says, let's see, um, you know, good. giving it all in. If you haven't already responded, please complete your questionnaire. If you do not receive your response online, we will mail a paper questionnaire to your address in a few weeks. Your response is important. By law, your response is required and your questions are confidential. Now, this is the part where they missed an opportunity, right? If you do not respond, we will need to send a Census Bureau interviewer. No, they should have, like, seized the opportunity. If you do not if you do not respond, we will need to send a disease spewing person who's going to cough COVID all over you to your door. And they'd have like 100% compliance. Bed. Yeah, they'd have 100% compliance. So, yeah. So they missed an opportunity. Government, you missed an opportunity. But uh, anyway, yes, I will be responding. I'm just going to do the online one because I don't want some some COVID spewer showing up at my house. I'm perfectly happy being isolated by myself. I've been yeah. doing this for 10 years, man. So why am I why now? This is another day, man. This is not special. Tell yes, me. I've been quarantining my whole life for this moment. That's right. That's right. I mean, like I said, a few fewer trips to the store. but and, it's, and I'm having a really hard time determining if this has actually really changed anything because in the wintertime, I actually write at donut shops. But as soon as it's comfortable temperature, I write at parks anyway. And I've always done that. So I, I literally, I'm going to the store like one less time per week. That is the only difference. Um, mm. And I'm walking around the neighborhood more than walking around the parks just because I'm going to the store and the post office less. If I go to the post office, I take the opportunity to walk in a park. Of course, in our town, they close the playgrounds. You know, it's like th there's signs at our playgrounds. It's like the playground is closed. You can use the rest of the park, but don't get near the equipment. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> this stuff is not. <laughs> if it rains, if it's sunny, this virus will not live on the playground equipment. I can see a dreary cloudy day with no precipitation sure i mean just tell them just, just bring gloves and sanitize the equipment you use but for the love I so. say, do you do you recall uh i don't know if it was like this when you were a youngin but when i was a kid you know you had the playgrounds like they have like the jungle gym area and they've got all the wood chips or the sand and mm -hmm. it's like hemmed in basically by like a wooden like walkway <clears throat> like almost like a wooden wall yeah like planks that they put up to hold it all in place that's basically when you go to the park you have to do that now like when you're a bad kid you had to go stand like you stand outside the sand right you stand there and watch every all the other kids play but that's every day yeah. now every day yeah it's like oh you want to go to the park about stand there don't touch nothing yeah <laughs> don't you get right. on that jungle gym. <laughs> yeah yeah now we actually had one of those built um in our town now, we were just moving beyond the age before those things happened. And in my day, when I was a kid, 
uh, you know, we, you had the occasional slide and the occasional swing set, but we didn't have these elaborate things we have now. But then I think I was in seventh grade. They put up the park down there. It was like, oh. <laughs> it was like a castle for children and it was so amazing it was so amazing mm. the operatic section from, from tech is not very good i admit it yeah <laughs> moon base alpha grays has said never done a census ever no one has ever come to ask me questions and i have lived here 20 years right. i do not it's remember watching him all the time they don't that's to right ask him. <laughs> yeah i i don't remember <laughs> filling out a census thing 10 years ago i can't remember if I did or not. I um, I was uh I was living with um I was going to college, I was still living with my mom at the time, so mm. she did it for me. Yeah, she probably did. Yeah, I mean I had I had a house and stuff a decade ago and you know, I had my own house, my own little kingdom, my own little castle out there, complete with full fencing everywhere because that's how things were out west. You know, it's like we have uh, this wide west. open space. Glorious. We literally were on top of the mountain. You could look out. It was literally the size of Connecticut before there was another house, city, or anything because it's so desolate. But you that's get inside this, house, this town, how everything much, is so how much crammed. Is that property? I want to move out there. Oh, well, no, my one tenth of an acre with my little 900 square foot bungalow house was 200,000. So, uh, Jesus. yeah, Lord yeah. Have mercy. Yeah. that's too much. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> and so, but since the houses are so tight, the fences are so large. So I had this massive six and a half foot fence all across the whole field, except the very front. I had more of a, like a low picket across the front field, but it was very nice. I mean, I can, I could literally like, I could literally work as you were saying, working a couple of weeks ago in my backyard and it would have been a problem, but you know, <laughs> yeah, we, we actually had a, we had a conference call yesterday and one of the guys is a big fisherman and, and, uh, there's like, my boss goes, he's like, look, he's like, there's no policy that says you can't go out into your boat in the middle of the lake and telework. As long as you can telework off of your phone's like hotspot, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> like, Sweet. <laughs> it's like, I need a boat. I have yeah. a lake right there. Yeah. Dorga says the human malware must have devastated a Pokemon Go player base. So sad. Uh oh. <laughs> there's a guy I used to work with uh, who is now. Um, He's disabled now. He's not working at all, but his wife works at a comic shop and he does like Twitch live streams. So mm. he's doing Pokemon Let's Go. I don't know. I don't. There was a time, and I don't know if it's still the case, um, where you could hack Pokemon Go to trick it into thinking you were walking around when you were just sitting at your mm. house. So like you could play Pokemon Go that way. <laughs> so nice. I wonder if that's what he's doing. That's possible, you know. Of course, of course, everyone uh, the the Pokemon Go servers are being analyzed by the by the Gulag government right now to figure out like, oh, these guys are playing Pokemon Go according to the server ping, so we got to go oh, pick them up. What, yeah, that's what they did in South Korea. They that's they right. doxed the crap out of everybody in South Korea. That's right. You were gonna was, stay home. Who was it? I think it was in was it a New Jersey mayor? I think that's like if you if we catch you doing a some party, we're gonna we're gonna publicly shame you. It's like really you're going to dox people for having a party. Yeah, that's Are the you same. kidding I mean, me? Yeah, definitely interesting. So, interesting world. Interesting world. Shall we dive the, into the all, topic? We're like I was gonna say all the 10. authoritarians are coming out. Speaking of authoritarians, <laughs> let's talk about education. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> and what's hilarious is the people everyone's been the the you know the person everyone's been accusing of being authoritarian is the ones taking the least authoritarian approaches, while the people who are saying he's an authoritarian are the ones being the authoritarians. Go figure right. that logic out. But anyway, I don't want to get That's political, so let's talk education. <laughs> Education uh, politics is there a difference? No, <laughs> like, not really. But hey, at, at least we can we can redirect, right? So I found this article here on Ars Technica, and a real learning in a virtual classroom is difficult. That's the title. It of sounds the article. like it. <laughs> I oh, read no, through about. It's I think a little more than half of this. It's uh, yeah. Ugh. So man. So give me your initial thoughts. Have you had classes online? Have you taught classes online? Any experience I have, online? but not, uh, no, me teach? No, not, not a teacher okay. at all. I'm a terrible, <laughs> I even have a coworker. Like I try to like show him stuff at work and he's like, you're really terrible at this. Do you know that? I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I'm not a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I can write like a step-by-step -step, like SOP, but I can't teach anybody. So um, yeah. my online classes, last time I took one was like 10 years ago um, for my <clears throat> degree. And it was much different. It was like, it was all everything like they had like basically message boards like forums um mm -hmm. 
you know, they didn't have any kind of live chat or live collaboration. There was not like everybody, so like Microsoft Teams or Google Hangouts where everybody gets on video and audio together and you chat and discuss things. And mm -hmm. it was um, the best experience I had was a teacher, uh, a professor I had for several of my IT classes. He would record all of his lectures that he did with his live classes and then put them up. So you could actually mm -hmm. go and listen to every single lecture even if it was on the same like chapter, he would have like three or four classes a day on that chapter. He would record them all, put them all up, just so you could go through and listen to all the student questions that he would mm -hmm. answer at the end of every class. So that's like the closest I ever had to something like this. Um, so I, I think it's interesting. Um, I think that it's cool that technology at least allows us to have some interaction and some you know, sense of community in the educational sense while this is going on. But I think that there's a real need for human connection and learning to socialize. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it's obviously, I don't think it's the best option in the world. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I, that's, um, I mean, as, as somebody trained in science, so I think science is one of the worst places for online classes because it's like, okay, can you teach me how to do a competent chemistry class online? Man, I wish pizza were over here because he could tell us all about I was about to say, that. weren't we talking with Where is pizza, pizza about his, um, what, his yeah. science classes like let months me, ago? <laughs> let me uh, chat with uh, pizza. Pizza, where you at? He's probably, he's probably creeping on the live stream. It's not signed in anywhere. Yeah, well, he's uh, he's actually on Discord right now. Send a what? message. Um, he's not, so he's not here. Yeah, I know, I know. It's weird. Well, sometimes he doesn't jump in until later. Like he might literally be like eating or something, or in a class or something. Who knows? On in an online class, going, oh god. I have, I have um, nobody. I have nobody to cover my the, eating. I was. I was yeah. Gonna... <laughs> so the challenge is though. It's like okay, I was a chemist. I was a chemistry professor. Can you tell me how to do a really good chemistry labs from home? <laughs> Other than like Breaking Bad, <laughs> and I don't recommend it. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, there's there's some things you can do, but nothing quite has uh, nothing quite has the ability as going into a lab, especially like with the, if you're talking labs. We're, we need equipment. Um, you know, ha you're not going to pull off a Grignard reaction in your basement, okay? I mean. <laughs> Really, seriously, um, you could buy yourself some glassware. You could do some things, but it's you know ether is hard to come across uh, <laughs> for the normie, and uh, hexane probably not going to get some. I mean, even the even the fun little um, even the fun know. little banana experiment, right? What is that? Uh, is that pentyl acetate? I think. Uh, if I remember correctly, you know, you're not going to be making pentyl acetate at home for you know for having banana smells <laughs> you know <laughs> i might have that chemical wrong but i think that's what it is i'll say there's i all i remember is i had like i had found a a very old like it was almost like a kid's chemistry set mm -hmm. like way back in the day this must have been from like the 50s or something but there's a whole chapter there about doing like urine tests <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> like it's like obviously you're gonna have access to that sooner or later <laughs> yeah hey hey little brother hold this <laughs> yeah right <laughs> those were the good old days the good old days but so i mean there's places edu online education works just fine now um oh man i wonder i think my brother's on on his stream though i think he is because he did his entire degree online what let me see your if brother's on his stream and we're sitting here talking to you Man. I know, I know. Let me see if he's still on. If he's not still on, of course. Um, if he's not still on, of course, then uh, let me just pull his stuff up over here. Then, yeah, it looks like he is still on right now. Um, yeah, I wish I should have I should have coordinated with him and had him come on because uh, he's he did his entire degree online and uh, you know he learned a lot honestly. Now the difference is he was doing computer work. It's a lot easier to do computer work. Um, some things are better for online. Some things are worse. Like some things are acceptable online. Some things are worse, I guess. Um, Andrew says, my mom's a teacher. And she's still getting used to it. Not sure how it'll do for second and third grade kids. And they're in a mixed grade class personally. But it seems her setup is all right. All right. So I'm Zipu. I'm Zipu. 
says, That's I cool. buy online courses, but I don't have motivation to watch them, and I don't know why I feel so lazy. Uh-oh. That's, that yeah, happens. you got to find happens. that motivation to improve yourself. I mean, I'm taking um, – I'm studying for my Red Hat certification right now, and that's oh, cool. 100% online, totally yep. self-paced. I've got a year to do it, um, but I've got to do it. You know, it's on yeah. me. Nobody's holding my hand, and it, it can definitely be tough to find that motivation. But if you, if but if you want, for me, it's all about the motivation. Like, I, if I'm not mm-hmm. motivated to get done, I'm not doing it. Just <clears> period, the end, straight up. So, uh, in this context, if if there's not an obvious or meaningful goal for you to achieve then you're probably not going to be motivated to do it. You should still try, I think, but I understand the struggle because if that's not, if there's no reward at the end of the, at the road, why go, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's part of it too, is figuring out the motivation. Here, let's have a quick look at the, uh, the article here and make sure we're still tracking. Right. All right. Good. So it starts out the quote, remote teaching sucks. It's yucky. And it's not the future of education. Very nice. Yucky, you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like I said, some things better, some things worse. Like getting on a conference call. Now, um, I've sold academic software. When I quit teaching, I did my own freelance thing. But for about four, three, four years, maybe it was four or five years, I forget. Um, I also sold academic software that if you're in college or something, you probably have used the software I used to sell. And uh, we were a brand new startup company at that point in time. Remember, we had we had our whole employee uh, of thir- uh, our staff of 30 people uh, in the Acton Business School down in Austin, Texas. And, uh, you know, we had our little conferences down there every six months. And then, of course, we like blew up like 300 percent growth year after year. And then Macmillan bought us and laid us all off. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's a working machine now. You guys know what you're doing. Go away. Oh, you're right. paying you too much. <laughs> so, the AIs can do your job now. No, Thanks. no. They, they brought in college flunkies and paid them like you know, twelve dollars an hour to do what we were doing, as, and as I do. imagine hey, that it did that's not the low go well. Wage in Seattle, okay? Yeah. that's not a living wage. Yeah, so but I imagine you. it stopped doing well because they had that you had to have either a master's or PhD and teaching experience to work in the position I had. They laid us all off and went with, you know, high school flunkies or college flunkies or whatever. Like, like the, the the kids who are in like the latter ten percent of their graduating class in high school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, so it says, thus spake my wife. What is up with this guy's writing? Thus spaketh my wife. What is she, a god? Um, oh. A high school, t- <laughs> high school English teacher with many years of expertise, and she's right. I teach at a university, and we've also moved to virtual lessons in the face of the stuff, uh, even before the current crisis. Uh, Yeah, in face of the human malware. Even before the current crisis, I already made extensive use of digital tools in the classroom. However, the virtual lessons are a poor substitute for actual in-person instruction. Let me take you on a tour of the future that we all should be trying to avoid. That's right. Um, I'm curious. How do you think he says when he says, and she's right? Do you think it's, and she's right? Or do you think it's, and she's right? Like, do you think that, like, he's he's saying that his wife is right a lot, and it's like, it's, it's a real drag. He's like, uh, she's right about this online education thing, I too. Know, I guess it, it depends if he's a technophile <laughs> or not. I mean, if he's a technophile, he'd be like, dude, I want to get into this. And they realize, oh, crap, this is a this is not a real good ed- learning experience. Uh, yeah, but, right? you know, we're, we're pushing everything online, and I've never considered online work to be a good, good thing. Now, from the biggest perspective... Um, from teaching my field, which was chemistry, you know, I cannot give you homework and have you have master in chemistry or Cengage learning or sapling grade the homework and allow you to learn because every single one of those systems is based on what answer do you put in. Real learning is done in the process to arrive at the answer. That's why your chemistry professor is telling you, show your work because we want to see how you arrive at your answer not at, at the exact answer itself. Because if you could do the process easily and, and miss a decimal place or miss rounding a number, and you can do everything perfectly right, and the computer will spit out and go, wrong. And you're just like, I have no idea why. And then it's just like, and then you spend a long time 
But if it's a professor, you look at it and you go, oh, the process is right. Why is the answer not right? Oh, they, they missed a decimal point. So I'd give you like like 99% of the credit for the problem and just circle up oh, the wrong decimal point. This, that would, if this was correct, it would have been the right answer. And you, you got almost all of the points because the yeah. process is what was important. And those and, decimals uh, matter. Like, like I know people oh, yeah. are like you smart in in math class and be like well, oh what well, it's just one decimal point it's like no this is no real story like three weeks ago before we had to go all go home for human malware one of my coworkers was a situation came up and he kind of knee-jerk react to it reacted to it and had to rewrite part of a script and um he moved he basically added wrong and put the decimal in the wrong spot of this mm -hmm. number that was part of his script and it blew up a server and we had to restore it from the backup <laughs> so it's like decimals matter yeah yeah well there, there was another problem though with these online homework now we were using master in chemistry at the time in the class and i had two of those you know those those sophomoric students that are always right right well these guys came to the officer right there's like there's a serious problem with this master in chemistry program i'm like all right what's that and i was like I, in full disclosure i don't really like it either but they're like well here's the problem if we go flip to you know page 32 of the textbook here they're talking about significant figures and proper rounding to arrive at the proper significant figures. If you've ever taken chemistry, significant figures are the thing that makes you want to go jump off a cliff or something. It's End been it. a while, but you know, I, I recognize um, the term significant Yeah, yeah. Ah, sig figs, sig figs, <laughs> ah, you know. Well, if you actually are doing the problems right because the way errors are calculated and you have absolute errors and relative errors and things like this, and if you're doing it correctly, they showed me that the answers in master and chemistry are wrong <laughs> wow. because, because computers are not capable of understanding significant figures and applying them properly in the process of the application. It just mm. strings together as many digits out, as many digits out, as many digits out, and then cuts off the very end. That is an inappropriate way of doing significant figures. So the, the students were, were completely right in showing me that. And so I actually went through and I was just like, hmm, just add a bunch of points to their score because they're completely right, you know, um, which is well, just fine. <laughs> so. Well, class, because two of you were intelligent, you're all getting free points. No, no, I just gave it to the two people that are intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> or anyone else who, who mentioned it, uh, whatever. Anyway, um, so teaching, uh, let's see, the problem is teaching is an intimate activity. Students give up a certain degree of control in uh, to the teacher and trust that the uh, person to, t to help them master some new topic. It doesn't matter how big the class, the intimacy is unchanged for the teacher. Teaching is personal. Yes, from the student's perspective, a one-on-one -on -one lesson is more personal than a lecture delivered to 500 students, but the anonymity and safety in large classes does not mean teachers are not seeing and modifying their approach via instantaneous feedback from their classes. That's an important thing. Um, the first part of that I thought of with teaching as an intimate activity, uh, if you've ever seen the movie, uh, The Man Without a Face, ever see that one? It's a Mel Gibson no. film from like probably 20 years ago now. I, it came out when I was in like high school or something. It might even be older, oh God. Um, but excellent, excellent film where this boy is trying to get into a, uh, a military school and has to take an exam and so, there's the like the the local island recluses who everyone thinks you know he's just a freak like he had a mangled face or whatever and mm -hmm. uh, but he used to be a teacher and so he takes on tutoring the student through the summer and you know one of the things that he says in there is you know t teaching is about trust I couldn't go behind the kid's back and make sure his mother found you know asked him about if he was had permission to come over and learn because teaching is about trust. I couldn't violate the trust and still be able to teach. Very fascinating point on education. Um, and yeah, it is very personal in this case. So and a teacher will shift their lesson based on the feedback from their classes, which is obvious. You know, you're going in there like this is easy and your class is going, me, 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 I don't know what's going on. You got to stop and slow down. You, know? <laughs> you just don't have that option if you're like, hey guys, watch this video last lecture. Right. <laughs> and it's, it's a thing that it's a very interesting thing. And I'm learning this more and more and as I'm now, I'm now getting to the point where I'm like starting to cross the line into like wizened old sage 
Uh-huh. And so all these youngins that I have underneath me, like their brains work different. So like I'll say something and be like, there, it's easy, done, right? And they're like, what? <laughs> I was like, what? What do you mean, what? <laughs> you know, but it's like, it's like how I learned to do math with, as I guess, like common, common core math, whatever. I've never taken it. I don't know what common core math is, but like, it's neither it's do like, math professors actually. <laughs> so it's like I have it's a two story about things that, because you know the, their their brains work differently because they were they were taught a lot of essential skills in a different way than I was. So um, it's it's always interesting to to see how people's brains operate as to how they learn stuff, and I'm seeing mm-hmm. that more and more that people can be very intelligent but not understand this specific piece of whatever part of our enterprise that we're in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think part of that is common core rotted their brains out. Um, we were I literally, I was, I was mentioning this kid. He was, I think he must've been sixth grade at the time. They're doing division. And he's like, he's like, I can't get this stuff. I, I can't figure this out. So I look at it and, and he's trying to tell me how they're trying to teach them how to do division in common core. And it's li- it's a crapshoot. It's literally like throw numbers against the wall until you arrive at an answer. It's, it doesn't make any sense. And so I'm like, all right, let me show you this. And I taught him how to do long division and he completely understood it. And so he does all these problems out. He's like, first time ever, this kid's did homework, he got it all done. Everything was right. Like, wow, that's cool. His teacher didn't give him any credit because he didn't do it his way. Yeah. So, so I take this I take this instruction to the math department at the college. I said, what is going on with this? They said, we have no idea. This is garbage, but we're forced to teach it by the educational standards. Jeez. They're like, so the math department has no clue. It's just a crapshoot. It's throw numbers against the wall until everything eventually bounces out eventually. And it's just like... And this, kids, is why there should be a federal education system, so that when there's one crappy system, we all have to suffer it. Yay! <laughs> all right, so he says, teaching is a performance. Anything that comes Performance. between the teacher and the student reduces the connection between the two. In that sense, all forms of technology interfere with intimacy of teaching and consequently impair performance. Counterparts is that technology including the humble whiteboard, tries to make up for the limitations of being human. And that is a worthwhile effort. All right, that's my production for the night. <laughs> I was about to say, you should do like the angry German. Like, you, like <laughs> the counterpoint is that the psychology is including the humble whiteboard. All right, all right, all right. All right. Why don't we do the evil German then? <laughs> The counterparts is our technology, including the humble whiteboard trying to make up for the limitations of being human. That is often is a worthwhile effort. Nine, 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 nine. nine. Faster, harder, faster. Nine harder. repeating. <laughs> faster, more intense. That's what George Lucas used to say in the Star Wars movies. Faster, more intense. Oh, God. Oh, God. Apparently, was it George Lucas's dog named both Chewy and... Oh, there was a dog in... What's there a dog in Indiana Jones somewhere? There were two things connected to either Steven Spielberg or George Lucas. I can't remember. One of those two had a dog, and that dog ended up being the motivation for both Chewie and some other animal in some other film. I don't know. Anyway, never mind. I can't remember. I don't know. Yeah, but... Somebody know what I might know what I'm rambling about. What are you? What are y'all in the chats? Yeah. Hey, hey, Grace, Moon Base Alpha Grace, let us know what's up. Go, go, uh, quant yeah. that real quick. Yeah, yeah. All right, watch some lessons about running a zoo for big cats recently. Not sure it's for me. I like my teeth. <laughs> Wow, only your teeth are what you're worried about? Like, I'm allergic to cats, so, like, I'm worried about, like, something that I'm allergic to and that can kill me is pretty bad on the uh, yeah. on the list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you might either be in, Dorka must either be in Ohio or Texas if he's in the United States. Um, those two are two places where you are allowed to have a lion. <laughs> All right. Uh, right now, I can see a uh, seat for hours and watch your live streams. But when I buy courses, which are in video format, it doesn't feel like good. Oh, oh, oh that's right. Yes. Yes. Rex. Rex Warden has it. Yes. Um, the dog named Indiana. So it's Indiana Jones. Uh, so okay. it was originally to be like, 
Uh, Indiana, I don't know, Indiana Smith or something. It's goofy. That didn't make a lot of sense. But the dog's name was Indiana. And then there was something else about the dog that also got connected to Chewie somehow in Star Wars. So, um, was it like that? Was it the dog of like Chewie's actor? Was it Peter? Whatever. I, I don't remember. I think the I think the thing that I saw it on was um, uh, Minty. Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, he does uh, he does uh, movie facts from Australia. I can't remember his name. It's Minty Comics. Oh, I think. Oh, is what I got I got to interrupt you. I gotta... General Kenobi. All right, carry on. All right, General Kenobi. Right. It says Callie likes Linux. Just said hello there, so I have to. It, it, it's it's K likes story. Linux though. It's K likes Linux though. I it, it, I know oh, it's it hard, is, right? Oh, my bad. It's, it's hard, right? Bad. No, she corrected me on it before. I have uh, a little, have a little derbal dyslexia. So oh no no! Fine. Everybody does it. Everybody <laughs> does it because we're so used to Kali Linux, right? But hi, I how would are have you? said Kai if I had realized that's what it was. I would have said Kai, not K. Yeah. <laughs> It My might bad. be Kai too. Kayla. It's just not Kali. I know that. I've been corrected. It's not Kali. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we have setting permissions, video technology, virtual, uh, virtual whiteboards, and the rest of it simply don't allow for a connection. And when introduced from such short notice, yeah, like for us technophiles, oh, dude, yeah, video conference, no problem. I mean, Old. I mean, Old I had to. I, I, I unfortunately had to. I, I just threw Zoom on my Arch computer. I've been using Ugh. Zoom for conferences and stuff. It's, I know it breaks my heart too. Um, but they, that's what everyone's telling me to use right now. And eh, okay, I mean, they, they didn't quite. They didn't quite accept my offer to use like my next cloud server. So, you know, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, when, when you get an average person who's not a techie, like, okay, you're doing everything on the internet. I, I don't even know how to turn the computer on. Like I can just imagine telling someone if, if my mother had me a teacher, which she's not someone saying you have to go teach on the computer now. <laughs> My mother doesn't know how to delete email. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, I had to struggle with getting my dad on Skype just so we can do video chats and talk to each other. Oh Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I also but, moved him to Linux mint. So like, it's a lot of new stuff for him. And, and so, yeah. Yeah. They, there you go. There you go. I mean, I was thinking about moving my mother to Linux mint. It's like, I don't think it'd make a difference. I mean, because she already doesn't know how to use windows. <laughs> Um, you know, it's like, that's a great I mean, reason why you should go to Linux. Just, just, if she's just, inept at everything, might as well use Linux. Well, I was thinking because her computer's not particularly good. I think peppermint might be the better choice. Just throw peppermint on there. We're good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went with so, mint just because it's real, like really f similar to like windows seven in terms of like mm -hmm. the general desktop layout. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Mint, mint is pretty Off close topic. too. I'd be worried about my mother's computer being able to run cinnamon. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a really crappy all in one. You like the monitor all in ones, you know? Oh um, yeah. 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 I, Lenovo, maybe. I know just yeah. how terrible they are. Yeah. They are horrible, but that's what you I figure. I'm, and it I figure I'm going to end up in like the third level of hell for how many people like I sold bad computers to in my life. <laughs> <laughs> No, you can make up for it by the penance of switching people to Linux. <laughs> I'm trying, man. <laughs> All right. Kids are able to mute the teacher for everyone without the teacher noticing. They can choose their own nicknames with predictable results and kick each other out of the class. In other words, classroom management has brought a whole range of different problems that require different skills and most importantly, planning. Oh, yeah. You, you're you're going to tell a bunch of eighth graders not to kick the teacher out of class and not right. to use... Not to eight use to their zero, favorite zero eight as their screen name. Yeah, yeah. Or <laughs> or or you know, having the you come in one day and every kid is named Bob Smith, you know? <laughs> oh God. That's when, one it, stupid name. <laughs> it went back that he PM'd everybody, everyone change your name to Bob Smith for the day. Like ah! <laughs> you know? like john smith the most common name in the in the country <laughs> yeah. everybody i actually had i had a math teacher named bill smith that had a different tie for every day of the year and sometimes he would give us exams that every answer was the same he was a very interesting character wow yeah. that is interesting i never had a, a teacher that interesting yeah he was he was weird he was he was definitely interesting I mean, I can't say he was our favorite, but he was definitely a weird teacher, you know. Um, 
Anyway, I can also see and hear, I've been listening in, the teachers struggling with their lack of instant feedback. How do you know if students have understood what you've just said? How do you even know they are still in the room? Short answer, the teacher often doesn't know. You know? So, I don't either. Sometimes I leave and I'm like, where did I go? Yeah, yeah. I, I, hey, I started shouting. I don't know where you went. <laughs> Mentally <laughs> checked out. <laughs> All right. Uh, Donna, my wife uses Microsoft Teams, which I'm more familiar with, to make the lesson really work. She has found that you need very strict behavior rules. All microphones are muted until requested. Most cameras are generally turned off to keep bandwidth under control. Oh, that's that's a bad one right there. You want it on so you can at least see if they're there. You know, you turn the cameras all off, and it's just like... Yeah, yeah. The kid, the the kid's sitting there on a phone playing a game, not listening. I saw, to I saw this one. It's like this all these kids are releasing all these kind of goofy videos nowadays. This is one with this girl's like not paying attention, and the teacher calls on her, so she just stops moving, <laughs> pretending like her screen froze, and the teacher goes, "I can see the fan moving." <laughs> <laughs> I can see the, the cat in the background, the, Tom. Yeah, the cat gave you away. <laughs> no, the cat gave me away. Can you see the cat in the background? No. Oh. No, I'm just uh, it was oh, relevant he is, to you. He's back there. He is back there. If I move just like that, you might be able to see him over top. It's there, just but... a black hole, that's all. There's Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um so yeah, to keep the band what she sets digital permissions for each meeting so that the potential for disruption is minimized. She has established an etiquette. Questions go in the chat. Only unmute when invited. If she misses a question, you may interrupt. All right. So just after lesson begins, Donna receives an email from her school. We strongly advise. <clears throat> Should we do this one? We strongly advise you not to turn on your camera. That, that seems like a bad policy to me. But anyway, the school administrators were worried about their teachers being unwilling stars in... I, I, I reread that because I wasn't sure that I got that right. The wait, first time I was that like, is the worst wait, book ever Did in I scope of an education it? article. It says bestiality, but man, that is per per perilously close <laughs> to bestiality. I was, like, I was like, is there is there something here I should, I I mean, should know about? Like, we shouldn't be talking culture, about bestiality, people. No bestiality. Your cat is massive, man. Like, we don't have don't cats that big down here. That'd be a wild animal, man. I'd shoot that thing and mount it on my wall. <laughs> He's only about 12 pounds. Not quite as good as, as big as a Maine Coon, but, you know, pretty good. Anyway, um, teachers being unwilling stars in bestiality, a beginner's guide. I'm not sure what that is. And, and I can't say I blame them. But the other side of the coin is that teaching without video makes the connection between the teacher and the student even worse. Donna decided to keep her camera on. Never mind the consequences. The feedback, the students appreciate even the poor connection. Yep. Interestingly, uh, her students have been super well behaved. They clearly don't like the environment, but they're making the best of it. As I looked up this bestiality and beginner's guide, and the first video is bestiality, the number one course for Christian schools. <laughs> What? Could you not? It's only got 500 views, but that's what came up. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> who, who decided that this would be a Christian school thing? <laughs> that's. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's check in on their the marketing real quick. So, uh, KLX Linux says it's K. I'm guessing K, K or Kai? Kai. Kai. He says, Kai. hello there. That's it's Kai, Kai, not K. Okay. All right. There you go. Okay, so Indiana was an um, okay. Indiana was an Alaskan Malamute owned by George Lucas in the seventies. Indiana was the inspiration for the character of Chewbacca, and later became the source of Indiana Jones's name. Okay, thank you. That's what I was looking for. See, I knew I wasn't going crazy. Uh, Kylex Linux uh, spent five hours of my life today making a 2004 pre-release for Ubuntu Lumina. Ooh, um, cool. So, in Lumina, I believe it's what the Unity is going to be, right? I believe. I, I believe that's the case. So, Unity is coming back to Ubuntu as a flavor, 
and they changed really? the name of it. And I think it's the Lumina. I think that's uh, I think that's what I heard. Um, so oh, it'll be an official Ubuntu spin eventually. Um, I have a laptop that has Linux Mint Mate that runs decently enough to browse the web and write documents. There you go. Uh, try Mint XSCE. That's what I put on my dad's PC. There you go. Yeah, I could do that too. Um, I have a main coon catch. is extremely heavy. Yes. Uh, main yeah. PC has a Core i9 GTX uh, 1060, 1060, 12 gigs of RAM. I should probably use an AMD card, but I like NVIDIA. There you go. Hey, this is proprietary. No, uh, shame, shame, shame the non-believer. No, just kidding. <laughs> you, you do you, Jacob. If that works for you, go for it. All right, yeah. All right. Um, I think online education will replace the classroom. I completely disagree. It's not I nearly this- as good as as that it can in some cases but okay i don't want my medical doctor um yeah oh, lumina, be, lumina is to... different os my apologies so unity is different one anyway go ahead i was gonna say i don't want my doctor to the, when i go to them in the future be like oh well you're gonna be the first human being i've ever worked on what <laughs> yeah yeah we did all no. our training in, in vr you know yeah right <laughs> a friend and now a friend of mine's actually well well he's kind of in tech school of course they can't do online education in what he's doing in tech school stuff like hvac stuff then the school's like you know we're we're getting we're getting you know the technologically advanced so they, they did some some um training in vr and the teacher looks at it, the students look at it, like this is not learning he's like give me a broken furnace to fix. That's what he wants. Give me a broken yeah, furnace yeah. to fix. You know, you're not going to simulate it in VR. I mean, really. Um, yeah. Hopefully, this is not too loud. All right, no, it's fine. All right, so um, I have a clacky keyboard. I okay, the digital silver lining. It was not all that bad either. The unexpected benefit was the Teams environment. Teams provides a setup specific for classroom with a class notebook based on OneNote. Of course, they're all indoctrinated into Microsoft. I mean, I would pick Microsoft over Google. Not, not because they're like virtuous people necessarily but <laughs> i i like the way microsoft stuff works a lot more than i like the way google stuff works. okay fair enough yeah but if Definitely, i had to pick a bullet to yeah. shoot myself with i would pick the one made by microsoft yeah i mean in, in their in all fairness they're they're producing final softwares and google's never really producing final softwares they're having experiments that some of them last longer than others <laughs> you know? so you know uh, I, I'll agree with you on that one. Yeah. All right. I, so I like Dorco's comment. I can't believe I didn't think about this. Oh, what's that? On subject, kids in China downvoted the app used, so it got booted from the app store, and they wouldn't get homework. Oh. Why? See, I, why them, are the Chinese kids thinking of that and not the American kids? Be, like, because they're actually <laughs> intelligent over there. Um. Our, ours like <laughs> ours are too busy watching watching TikTok videos of people dumping milk all over their heads dressed as cows going I want your milk I want your milk that's what America I haven't seen that one <laughs> I was somebody threw it up on the Discord server it was the first TikTok video I ever watched and I'm not sure I want to see any more of that nonsense <laughs> so you can, I don't know you can probably find it it's on the Discord server somewhere uh, I think I somebody threw it in I think it. someone threw it in Sillyville if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, well, it so, can stay there. I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. So, um, one note has an individual. Hey, pizza's on. Oh, hey, hey. how's it going, pizza? Somebody We're kind of talking about up. the benefits of online education. What are your th- What are your thoughts? Okay. Here are the benefits. You get to learn when there's an outbreak. I, <laughs> I at least you attempt to learn when there's an outbreak. That's it. <laughs> There you go. I mean, hey, you can also go to class in your underwear if you want to. <laughs> I mean, Don't no, I can't. Don't turn on your webcam. Yeah. Don't I... turn on your webcam. Well, I mean, you're sitting down unless you're standing up and walking around. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But, uh, yeah, uh, I've had a terrible experience with Zoom and Microsoft Teams and Jitsi. Well, Jitsi I didn't use at school because my teachers don't know how to open source. But, uh <laughs> I you go Jitsi. to the website called jitsi.com. <laughs> yeah, I I uh, tried Jit out. Nazi. We use Jitsi for the uh, Linux user group I'm in today, um, mm-hmm. and 
and it we had issues because it's peer to peer. So if one person has a bad connection, it ruins it for everyone. Oof. So and for video conferencing, why would you make your service peer to peer? That's like if if you have bad bandwidth, you ruin it for everyone. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Zoom. Uh, if Comcast Internet just sucks for five seconds, you're all done with. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so uh, we've been using Zoom. Uh, somebody Zoom bombed our class. It was pretty hilarious because they just started playing fart sounds and stuff. <laughs> it, and it was the fart sounds wasn't what's hilarious. It was the teacher's reaction to it. Uh, just some guy playing fart sounds in his through the mic, and the teacher got so angry. It was pretty funny. Um, and uh, the other thing uh, that happened was uh, was a different time. Somebody just started playing explicit rap music and uh -huh. the teacher couldn't figure out how to kick the kid and uh then the teacher asked me because i'm the tech guy and i said uh um i don't know i don't use zoom i i do use zoom for biddle by the way but uh i i don't know i didn't use zoom i just said that because it was too funny what was happening <laughs> so oh, man. and then we used microsoft teams for another class because all my teachers are using different platforms oh, some are using zoom some are using ms teams See, and uh, see, Tom, here's the problem with online schools. You're letting the prisoners manage the prison. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. So with Microsoft Teams, there weren't any MS Teams bombings uh, because it was actually students who were doing the Zoom bombings, by the way. So it wasn't like trolls on the Internet who were spamming porn like what you hear in the what yeah. you're seeing in the media I mean, right now. Technically, but... aren't all you kids on the Internet? So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, anyway so um yeah we used ms teams uh that sucked too because i'm on linux and the linux client is garbage it, it took it dead. literally i was late to the class because i'm dead serious it took 10 minutes to load 10 and then i got <laughs> yelled at for being late even though it was microsoft's team's fault 10 minutes to load and then it also uh -huh. wouldn't let me change my team it wouldn't let me change my name I was supposed to use my real name, but I signed in with my Microsoft account, which I put the pizza loving nerd, and I got yelled at for not changing my name <laughs> when I couldn't change my name. Are they grading you on screen names now? Yes. <laughs> That's class participation. That's your aptitude grade. Do you remember that, Tom? Uh, you got aptitude grades? That's your aptitude grade these days. Uh, How good's your screen name? How appropriate is it? I don't know if we ever got aptitude grades. I had a few um, classes where that was that was yeah. in there. I was like, "How do you do aptitude?" Like, I'm doing my best. I just suck. <laughs> like, I just suck at like British literature. Yeah, yeah. Although, although my my computer skills did actually allow me to to score one of the highest grades in physics, despite doing the one of the worst in the class, um, because we had a real real pain of the petunias professor for just for the lab. We had a different mm. professor for lab for lecture. And man, this guy's like, I could get into Excel and change your your fonts to del little deltas when we're doing the change in things. You know, I do like delta and formulate all the titles and center everything, make everything look nice. Yeah, I get like the only I, I get the average of like like eighty, uh, like ninety to hundred percent on every lab. The average score for the lab is like twenty percent because the teacher was so pissed off that nobody could figure out how to just format their chart right in excel <laughs> oh nicholas Styers talking about lockdown browser i forgot that was a thing dude uh, i remember when i was taking classes i had my i think it was my networking class we would do the quizzes in class and we would use the lockdown browser but the way it worked at the time is it was a it was a like it was almost containerized within your browser so it would take over your computer screen but only if you're using IE or Firefox or Chrome. And I was big into Opera at the time. So I was using Opera. So all it did was take over Opera so I could still get outside the lockdown browser during the nice. quizzes. <laughs> Not that Very I cheated. Nice. Not that I cheated. Yeah. Sure. sure. Um, I'm, I'm hey, Zipu what they has... call cheating, the real world calls research. <laughs> That's just true. Um, so Copy he says there's an alternative to... to... Skype other than Discord for Linux. Um, actually, Luke Smith just did a video today, and I believe he has a list of alternatives you can try in the the 
uh, description of that video. So check that out on Luke Smith's channel. What about it's the video about Zoom. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I'm face bombing for a completely different reason, by the way. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I was about to say you're um, typing about something. I know we're pretty embarrassing, but yeah, I know, I know. No, so uh, this this kid from my school wants me to help him build a game, but I don't trust him because he's lied to me a bunch of times, and now he's saying that uh, now he's saying that I'm racist because I won't help him build his game, and he's Asian. Mm -hmm. Why are you racist? Because I won't what I won't help him basically. Why yeah. won't you help him? Because I have other things to Sounds do. Sounds racist and... to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because I it's because I don't trust him because he yeah. one time he invited me over to his house and he said that his dad okayed it. And then I went over and his dad didn't okay it. Not, so not quarantine they yelled well. at us. No, it, it was like a year ago. So <laughs> he yelled awesome. at both of us and and then uh and then I got grounded for it. Hmm. So I don't trust anything he says now. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the best thing is just, I mean, don't tell him I, I don't trust you, but the best thing I is know. Just, just say, I you know, he I, I'm, watch this I'm, channel. I'm working on the live stream. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it's, it's just, just tell him, you know, you're too busy. Um, yeah, I, that's what I'm telling him. He says, yeah. oh, this is hilarious. Uh, he said, why won't you help me? And I said, cause I'm too busy even in quarantine and i said yeah i'm either programming making a youtube video or csgo which is mostly what i do <laughs> at least a hundred percent of what i do csgo uh, okay so. okay uh, so pizza like, g g honest to hear how often have you been playing csgo on your other screen while you were watching a lecture in class uh zero actually oh wow okay that's good because so you well, are I, tr I tried once but i forgot to turn off my speakers so i got in trouble <laughs> that's how i stopped <laughs> uh, the old <laughs> microphone trick. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I had a student who'd sit in the back of my class and play Game Boy all day. I'm just like, really? I said, dude, stay home. The graphics are better. He's like, no, if I stay home, and my dad calls, I'll get in trouble. I'm like, don't pick up the phone when you're supposed to be in class. Um. Anyways, uh, he, uh, I just said that I'm working on Border OS. And then he said, that's not that hard if you're using Linux as a base. And I said, yes, it is. Have you ever built an operating system? <laughs> he said, yes. And I said, okay, which one? I was helping my friend Redacted, which he just made up because there's no one at my school with that name. Hmm. Uh, uh, what is the name of the OS he worked? I don't remember. Oh, well, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's jump back over to the article here. We got, let's see, hunting for the perfect board. Let's just kind of scan through some of these. Is there anything, uh, uh, Tex, is there anything specifically you wanted to go to in the article here? I think, I mean, I use OneNote at work for making all kinds of little notes about things, but it's not, I saw, I mean, for me, it's like for it was a one guy doing a job. I think OneNote's great for that. Um mm -hmm. I don't know how well it would work as like a Blackboard program because I recall when I worked at Apple, we actually used Blackboard for team meetings, and um, and it was um, it was kind of it was kind of a pain. Um, so I would if I I would imagine at least for the drawing aspect of it, OneNote would be better than Blackboard. Mm -hmm. But I don't really know. I did, I'm looking at everything else like at this. I purchased this. A, to a subscription to explain everything like i've never used explain everything so mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, and i find it's sure like no I, I really don't want to be spending money on subscription services in the middle of all of this nonsense when there's perfectly capable software out there here's a thought why don't you learn how to use some free and open source stuff to mr right. schools you know um that doesn't cost us anything and we can teach people about how powerful free and open source software is um the school districts has to justify their budget though tom if they don't spend the money they'll lose it that's right you know that. that's right that's right yeah. um there's no place for me virtual teaching is surprisingly 
energy sapping in the class. If you are doing your job right, there is positive feedback. You give lots of energy, but you also receive a lot back from the students. In a virtual environment, it doesn't matter how much you give, you get nothing back. Even the very stillness, you have to sit at your computer for a few hours to give a class, eats away at your energy and mood. There's no positive take on this. Removing the most enjoyable part of teaching makes a horrible job. It goes horribly wrong for the students too, especially the shy students. There are students who don't ask for help in class. I pick them up. I help them and they grow out of their shells. That's all gone now. Verdict? My youngest, who stands accused of driving a body while under the influence of hormones. What is up with the flowery language in this? Okay, my child going through adolescence has reacted <laughs> about this uh, about as positively as you might expect. I bleeping hate it. Thank you, Ars Technica, for those languages. Um, my students are also pretty forthcoming with their opinion. They, I also load the, the virtual aspect. We all accept the need under the circumstances, but I expect the amount of forgiveness from students will decay exponentially. On the bright side, the tools that I've discovered may well be used for many years to come in, as an adjunct to in-person lessons. So that's, I don't know. Um, there are some so, pros. So you're finally learning to use technology? Is a short yeah. version? I guess, yeah. <laughs> That's what so, I get out of that. I mean, there are definitely some places where technology education can be just fine. Uh, there are some places it cannot. Um, pizza, what what is the classes that are working the best and what are the ones that are working the least in your setting right now? Uh, language arts is definitely working the least because... Uh, um, because... What happened is we had this terrible student teacher who didn't know what she was talking about or what she was doing. So every day she would give a lesson and uh, and then she'd say, all right, go work. But she didn't like make it clear what you're supposed to do. So then you'd spend like 10 minutes trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. And uh, well, the student teacher is no longer teaching that class and we we're supposed to write an essay and I'm like, uh, and then the teacher who actually runs the class, not the student teacher, was like, all right, now uh, please finish what uh, the student teacher was having you do. And I'm like, I, I don't know. The student teacher never knew how to explain <laughs> stuff. I still don't know what I'm supposed to write. And if I ask you, it looks like I wasn't paying attention. We something. just go through this whole semester again, or year, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, honestly... I think we should just get rid of online school, have our summer vacation now, and then not have a summer vacation. Because I, um, I can't learn online. I, mm -hmm. I thought it would be way easier because I'd be able to listen to music and stuff. But uh, my brother tries to mess with me when I'm in uh, Zoom calls. To be fair, I try and mess with him too. But uh, <laughs> um, That's just siblings. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there aren't... There, I haven't seen a single teacher actually give out a due date, which makes me not motivated to work on anything. Mm. <laughs> because, yeah. uh, what else? Uh, just every nothing makes sense. Uh, I've the platform we're using, Schoology. There's been two classes where teachers have assigned assignments, but then not provided a way to turn them in. <laughs> and so I'd waste my time doing the assignment and then not have a way to turn it in without emailing him. Hold it up to the camera. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it looks it good, kid. Next. <laughs> Give you an A for participation. There you go. Just, just an F for not setting your screen name right. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I couldn't because of Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. Cumulative grade of C. Don't, don't you still have a Windows computer laying around, though? <laughs> Jump into that one next time. I do, but you think I'm going to reboot just for school? That's true. That's, that's, that's true that's with that. Call of Duty, spoken. That's what Call of Duty spoken. Yes. Yeah, spoken. A, a true Linux guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I reboot for Call of Duty, but not for school. For school, I stay on Linux. <laughs> Those updates might strike at the wrong time, man. That's we right. All what night? what happens? We CS Go the next day. What happens when you go to boot up your computer for school and you're like, "I sorry, I'm as class teacher." The Microsoft had an update. <laughs> I couldn't cancel it. 
<laughs> oh, oh, I just thought about like so if like crazy stuff happens at my job, like obviously I can just like text my boss and be like, Hey look, this is going on, I'm working on it, we'll get it figured out soon enough. But like I would as a teacher, especially like with like kids as students, I would not want to give my number to them. Like how would oh, they get no. in touch with me? <laughs> like they couldn't text me like, Oh, I'm doing updates, teach, sorry. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, how many of them are going to use I'm doing updates as the excuse for not having their Yeah, they'll all send you the exact same Most screenshot with the same percentage. <laughs> yeah. And the same resolution. And the yeah. same dots. So the dots uh, are in the same order. <laughs> I, I will say my photography teacher, which is for Photoshop class, he kind of expects everyone to have Photoshop. <laughs> and uh, no one has Photoshop because it's expensive. And especially now when there's probably about to be a recession, like Photoshop is the last thing we need right now. So he was telling everyone that uh, if you can't afford Photoshop to use GIMP instead, mm -hmm. um, which I lips. commend him for that or that. But I think that's <laughs> stupid because it's just an older version of GIMP just to have a name change. But uh, anyways, it's less offensive, though. <laughs> yeah, but it's just it's an older version. That's the thing. Yeah, what version is it? Is it 2.8? Uh, no, no, no. It's still 2.10, but it's an older version of 2.10. No, I'm still running 2.8 over here, man. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, anyways, he what told people... All the latest updates. Look at you. You're going to have an unstable system. He, the Photoshop teacher told people to use GIMP, but then he said that he doesn't use GIMP, which means he can't give you help if you are using GIMP. So then I'm... And I'm like, it's a completely different interface. You expect everyone to just know how to use it all of a sudden. So then I've said, all right, I'll just make some tutorials for my channel and put it for my class and then give it to the teacher. He can use those to well, learn it himself and then other students can use yeah. them. Hopefully they, so they I, should give you extra credit for doing something like that. I know our same. schools would. Well, but. that was a flop because uh, most of my videos only got three views, probably because I uploaded them all at once. I uploaded 12 mm -hmm. videos in 10 minutes. <laughs> oh. So that's probably why they don't have any views. But well, and then just I, throw them in a playlist. They'll get some views. I did. but uh, And then I got a lecture from the teacher saying that I'm not the teacher. And that uh, I... <laughs> oh, my God. You got a, you got a tin pot dictator as a teacher. <laughs> I know. It's These are all different room. teachers. <laughs> so... Uh, so the teacher can't help. So you offer to help, and the teacher criticizes you for offering to help. Yep. Dude, you have the most screwed up school system ever. I know. Anyways, I need to regain oh, my Carolina time. South Carolina was bad. I, I need to regain my time for spending uh, three days making 12 videos. So uh, uh, I'm just going to play CSGO for two weeks and not do anything else to recoup my time. <laughs> well, have a good night, man. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm scared. I... I I've I've learned nothing in that class. It's gonna jump off the stream uh, now. Everything yeah, I've yeah. learned in photography class is is I've already known how to do in GAMP. I'm just relearning how to do it in Photoshop. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about GAMP now that I've actually learned how to use Photoshop, I don't like GAMP selection tools very much. Mm. Photoshop has way better selection tools. That's mm. the only thing I'd use Photoshop for. Like what? Because, uh, what tools specifically? Uh, it has a. Uh, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but there's a tool that uses AI to select stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it makes it real easy yeah. to select. What? Yeah. Um, I know that. It makes selecting really easy, whereas in GIMP it's really annoying. Mm -hmm. And Photoshop does <laughs> does a much better job if you refine an edge in a selection. Mm because GIMP gives you a lot less options for that because you can just shrink it by a couple of pixels, but Photoshop, you can like feather it and make the edges, some of the edges uh, you can do all that a little bit. Too. Oh, I just don't know how too. to do it. It's just that. a different place. Yeah. But yeah, I just, uh, I, uh, there's just a couple of tools in Photoshop for selecting. Uh, that's mm -hmm. not the only one. There's another selection tool too. That's much better. It, Hold on, let me open up Photo P, which is basically a one, one to one recreation of Photoshop. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> Oh, it has a better, it has that one selection tool, and then it also has a better healing tool, because in GIMP you have to select another thing to heal, whereas Photoshop uses AI to do it. Mm, that's actually, those are all brand new features in GIMP. In um, GIMP? But, or, I'm sorry, in, in No, they uh, aren't. We're Photoshop. using an older, we're using Photoshop CS5. Mm, 
Mm, okay, this might be this were added by then. I thought all the AI stuff was added just recently. Yeah, we're using. Mm. Oh well. Wait, we're not even CS5. We're using Photoshop Elements, which is a dumbed down version of Photoshop. And oh, we're using yeah, the one but that but that's out. gonna be a newer one though. Which no, all it's the not. A it's the same. Really? It's the same year as CS5. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's I think it's like 2012. So what a, uh, yeah, that's. I didn't think they were using AI back then, because I know they just had a press release about starting to use AI elements. But no, they're know. adding more AI stuff. Okay. But right, um, right. they're. They're adding more huh. AI stuff, but they're um, but uh, they those older versions also had AI stuff. They're just adding more AI. Okay, so a you're just gonna I sell your cell to the AI machine. Actually, AI is <laughs> AI is actually a real image manipulation is actually a really good use of AI. To be honest, mm -hmm. yeah. that's one of the things okay. I'd recommend it for. Like for yeah. voice assistance, that's stupid. You could just do it much faster if you're actually willing to not be lazy but image manipulation ai is actually really helpful mm -hmm. that's good yeah let's see uh let's see if there's any other comments here oh cs5 is from 2010 i thought cs6 is from 2012 apparently Two, yeah that makes sense yeah oh i bought okay, I cs4 guess must have been 2010 right when cs5 came out I guess it's the same year as CS6, then. I thought it was CS5. CS6. I thought okay. CS6 was 2014, no. and then C CC was 2016. My yeah. bad. Hey, I still have a copy of CS2 laying around somewhere. Good stuff. I wonder if my photography teacher would be able to do something using Photoshop 1.0. Nice. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up here soon because I have another stream coming up here in 45 minutes. So give us your final thoughts, everybody. Tech, go first, I guess. I was about to say, I'm, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan. It's fun to make fun of it, but uh, yeah, it doesn't sound like it's the, the greatest thing in the world. I, there's, it's, it's a situation we're in, as, as the article said, the, the halfway through. You know, we're all making the most of the human malware situation. So, mm -hmm. human you know, malware. <laughs> yeah, you thank Gamers Nexus for that. That's where I heard it. But th that's how they're avoiding the uh, the, the copyright the word. The monetization. Yeah. So, that's what somebody said. Are you are you not saying that word for for monetization? I'm like, yeah, and it actually works. None of my news videos have been hit by the demonetization. My my other ones, the other two videos I did, which are more more specifically about it have been and i'm not even going to challenge challenge the those i'm just going to let them sit and sit in limited monetization state but none of my other videos despite all those news stories specifically about it have been hit <laughs> so, hmm. interesting yeah. all right i'll call it uh i'll call it beer flu instead there you go there you go <laughs> um all right pizza final thoughts i understand why we're doing it because obviously the beer flu but um at the same time, it's not efficient because students can misbehave and teachers can't punish them uh, because there's no lunch detentions or anything. Or I guess they could give an email home, but I mean, if your your parents would probably hear you messing around and get mad anyway if they're if they're home. And then the other issue is some people only have one family computer, and then their parents need it for work, which means students are missing Zoom calls uh, and stuff. Plus, Zoom sucks. MS Teams suck. Uh, Zoom just collects so much data. I was reading about all the scandals happening with it. It's insane how much data collection it does. It almost makes Facebook look like it's collecting nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, we'll be talking about Zoom in the news tomorrow, I think. I mean, um, we actually had an executive order come out that I actually had to work on a script to rip it off of every single computer on our enterprise. Wow. Yeah, that's fun. Yep. Um, not having it. And, then, and uh, MS Teams is a lot better than Zoom. It probably also collects data, but pr from what I've read, not nearly as much as Zoom does. Mm -hmm. The issue with MS T Teams is that its Linux client is garbage, and so I guess I have to reboot to Windows to use it. Never, never. <laughs> anyway, so... <laughs> Your Windows, yeah. your Windows computer just keeps on trying to update itself and breaking, you know? I, 
You know, it's funny. I have a Windows Insider preview, so it updates even more often. Oh, God. <laughs> you should, I you torture could, yourself, don't you? It's you because, should use, use it's your, like, Windows 9. <laughs> back when I was a Windows, an actual Windows user, I opted for it, and I haven't figured out how to disable it. So I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'll use the Insider preview. I mean, I use Arch. It's, I have... Uh, uh, I'm brave Arch enough is to use painful Arch, enough. I, well I should use... use the Windows technical. I actually <laughs> hopped off of Arch. I'm on Fedora now. It is okay, but uh, CSGO doesn't run well on it, so I'm going to hop to uh, Ubuntu 20.04 oh, oh, as soon oh, as it comes oh. out. Yeah. Pop no, OS. not not Pop OS because I haven't announced this yet, but I'm rebasing Border OS on Fedora because I or I'm based on Ubuntu because I couldn't figure out how to get uh, Fedora's frame rate to work properly in csgo that's the only reason csgo is the reason i'm making border say, os based on ubuntu so why, why are you not using pop os then oh. you totally went around as a that. base oh. oh not as a base oh okay. yeah that's I i'm using oh, okay. I'm, i have to use ubuntu because i'm a base my distro on ubuntu no but no now i can't work on border os oh don't worry i'm gonna Disgusting. rip off, i'm gonna rip out all the snap crap and the telemetry okay. crap Instead, I'm going to use flat packs, and uh, I'm going to have a heavy reliance on ice apps, which probably collect more data than Ubuntu does. That's right. Ice, Yay. ice baby. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Yeah. Um, Necromancer, oh, thank man. you very much for that super chat, my friend. You, you retracted your message, but thank you anyway. Um, so Luke Smith was recommending Toxic to replace Zoom and Skype. I've not seen that, so um, I can't comment on it one way or the other. Mr. And... Addison is out. Yeah, God and, bless, uh, sir. Good luck. Yeah, and we had uh, <laughs> Michelangelo says, no, someone works for a hospital uses Zoom. How can that be HIPAA compliant? It probably isn't. <laughs> but they're normies. They don't understand. All right, I Definitely will be on not. my other channel today. We're going to be talking about, is this the start of the persecution? Ooh. So a little different live stream over there. That's on my Christian channel. So if you are interested in that, uh, that will be starting in about 40 minutes from now, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So we'll be talking about, is this the start of the persecution? The link is right there in the chat. All right. I will, uh, any last uh, last goodbyes, folks? Goodbye, Bye. Richard Addison. It was good not knowing you. <laughs> Later all. What happened to Richard Addison? <laughs>